obviously I'm going to talk about posture and occlusion. And, um, you know, I, one thing I've learned is that the judgment of someone's intelligence, and, and this applies to both Javier and Hamid, is how much you agree with them. And after listening to all these, I just want to give a shout out to some really great lectures and some really good friends that, that gave some amazing, I haven't heard from Robert yet, but amazing lecture. So, wow, that's really good. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go through what I do in my office to help on Monday morning, help sort of bring this posture thing in. Now, I'm going to assume that everybody listening is a great dentist. We're all great dentists. And I'm gonna assume that everybody listening is some kind of occlusion guru, they know their stuff, they know what's going on. And what you've known has probably got you this far in your career. And for some of the people listening, they're going, well, you know, my career's not yet over, what else can I learn? Um, but I'm also gonna assume that a lot of people don't concentrate on posture. I mean, it, it takes a long time to kind of dissolve and get all this stuff going. So there's a lot of people who aren't um, concentrating on posture. Now, I, obviously we've got some amazing technologies. We've got real and now virtual articulators. I graduated from dentistry 41 years ago. We didn't have computers. Now we've got articulators that are virtual. Um, we can do virtual wax ups, real wax ups. We can do virtual implants, implant placement, digitally made crowns. Um, how are we assessing the bite? Are we analog or digital? Um, if we're just analog with paper, we don't have the real time data. We don't have what we know to be really important. I'm sure Bob Kirstein's going to talk about that. Um, Robert, I mean, and, um, but I want to talk about some real problems, real problems we have in our office. And, you know, a patient comes in, they've chipped a veneer, they've broken a crown, right? We know how to handle that. It's something we're, we're pretty familiar with. Uh, we even know how to spin it, you know, so it's not our fault, it's not our veneer. The patient wants it to be our veneer, but it's not. And so we're good. But what happens when something else comes in? What happens when a patient comes in and says, well, my bite was high after you did it, but now it's fine. And we've all had that. We've had this, they come back in, you're going, oh, I'm gonna have to adjust. They go, no, no, it's fine now. Well, what happened at that point in time? If he has zirconia crown, how did the patient grind that zirconia crown down? How does that work? Or maybe we get something really worse where the patient's saying, you've lost my bite. And this is a, uh, a common one like, uh, that, that I get referrals from other dentists because they're saying, hey, I've lost, the patient says I've lost the bite and there's a bunch of confusion with that. And what's our typical in dentistry? We graduated, I got a son in dental school right now. He's writing an exam on, on endodontics. He's at uh, Rutgers University. And what are they gonna teach him? Probably they're gonna teach him the pop solution where they make a piece of plastic, right? It's, it's simple, it, it works most of the time. Um, we might joke about it, but the patient has a distinct lack of acrylic. Um, but the pop should fix thing up. Now, maybe all these, oh my goodness, heavier, bless you, because everybody has been so intelligent. Um, there's been some fancy neuromuscular stuff. Um, maybe we're going to make them some fancy neuromuscular orthotic. And uh, it's anatomical, it's balanced, it's removable. It's just downright sexy, right? And they can wear it full time because they can speak with it. I got one in my mouth now. I can wear it all the time. It always helps me. Um, as opposed to because of removal, this is what I like because I don't have to go and alter teeth. And obviously, everybody's using big time technology. I mean, look at Constantine Ronkin and his rebuilding that whole face. Everybody's using big time technology. But do you have stability? Um, Things are going great and they're feeling really great and your patient's going great and everything looks good, but all of a sudden they come in and they say, oh, my left side feels high. And maybe you got a T-skin and you go and adjust the bite a little bit. But then they come in in about a week and they say, well, now my right side feels high. 
And then they come back in a few days and they go, now my left side feels high. And then they come back in a few days and now my right side feels high. What's going on? And this is how I got into the posture side of it because I was trying to figure this out. So you're in a bit of a quandary. Um, part of that quandary is things aren't stabilizing and you're probably a little bit frustrated, the patient's frustrated, uh, downright mad. Um, you understand that this head neck posture is a thing. And as many people have covered it today, um, you can't really use the 80 20 rule. Well, this works 80% of the time because you don't really understand the 20, why the 20 doesn't work. And that sets you up for a bit of a problem. You maybe tried working with somebody like a chiropractor, a physiotherapist or massage therapist, but which one, who do you trust? When, when should you go and, and, and or how should you integrate and when should you be integrated? And does treating posture and occlusion really work? I think we've had some great lectures today that says, yes, it's important. So our more traditional program is to deprogram. We want to deprogram the bite. We use this term. We're going to deprogram muscles. We're going to deprogram the bite. And we might use appliances. But we're basically going to keep maybe a habitual closure pattern. Maybe there's gonna be some change in, in the closure pattern, but mostly it's going to be worth, uh, in respect to deprogramming. We're gonna take models and we're gonna do wax ups. And we're gonna look at that aesthetic concerns. And we're gonna look at the tooth gingival mechanics and we're gonna discuss with other dentists, oh, where should we put that, that uh, implant? Oh, maybe we should do some gum lengthening over there. Oh, really? Do you think, you know, how should we do, how should we do the spacing and do the DSD, the digital smile design? And then we're going to look at the function occlusion at the very end. And that is a lot of people out there teaching that type of approach. Great approach. If you've got great hands, I think that's fantastic. Everybody here obviously has great hands, but what if you're not one of these great girls? So, Oh, yeah, the other thing, of course, everybody looks at posture. No, they don't. Not everybody looks at posture. So what if you don't have great hands? So we've got a picture here, and, and we saw from Ben Sutter, we saw that in this T-skin, if you've got a high little tower at the back, that's something that maybe isn't really balanced. Maybe you want to go in and adjust it. But what you should be also looking at is how that little tiny adjustment in the back changes that patient's posture. How they go from a forward head posture, arms forward, rotated hips to more of an upright posture. And that's in the course of just a few minutes or you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. If you can do that, if you can do that very fast, should you not be looking at that part of this as affecting what we do? Um, so how do we alter this? I like to call it reprogramming. You do as well. We balance the posture. We pay attention to the microclusion, and we find a more biomechanical closure pattern, which we saw with the K7 and with all our other ways and techniques. So we have some biomechanical diagnostic protocols. So instead of aesthetic first, we're doing a whole body assessment. And I'm going to explain how I do that at, at, at uh, the end of this. We're going to look at functional occlusion. We're going to look finally at the aesthetics and support because we're trying to support that occlusion there. Now, success with biomechanical protocol, we diagnose, we treat, we create greater stability. It's a very good thing. And it can be done by people that uh, aren't gurus in occlusion. It can be done by the rest of us that are just general dentists. So the question becomes, what's a whole body assessment? While we're going occlusion, circle verbally, shoulder girdle, spine, hips, knees, feet, right? Teeth to toes. Um, as a matter of fact, ICMO right now, see the ICMO banner, they're doing a, a webinar called Teeth to Toes and uh, similar to what you're doing. So we're looking from occlusion to feet and we're also looking from feet to occlusion because it goes both ways. It's ascending and descending. We all know that. That's been explained. But what we quite often get into the realm of is we're looking at this. This is the problem that we see. But we very rarely look at this. 
we don't see this problem. It's kind of like the iceberg. You can see the ice above. You can't see the ice below. It's kind of like diagnosing the weather, right? We can see this United States, uh, we get US channels up here in Canada, and we see this where they've actually taken the United States out and made, this is a map of the weather. How are you gonna diagnose the weather? Well, it helps if you know what's going on above and below you. So, you know, if you know there's a polar uh, vortex coming down or whatever, then you would really wanna know that. So maybe you look at the, the head, the neck, but actually what we need to do is we need to be looking at the whole world you know, Africa generates our hurricanes. Shouldn't we be looking at, at everything? Because we get to be having a horrible thing coming to hit Miami and flood your beautiful patio, or we might not, but we don't know a fault looking at everything. So how much do we think about the spine? How much do we think about the muscle interactions that are going back and forth and back and forth? Nothing happens in isolation. Um, you know, stress isn't free. Stress costs something. And if we stress something out, we're going to have to pay for it somewhere else. And that creates our problem. So what do we mean by posture? Well, posture can be static, dynamic. We can be sitting. We can be lying down. We can be lifting. We can be in a dental chair. All these things make a difference. It's the ability to attain uh, center of gravity with a base of support. I got my posture right now sitting upright in a chair. I can have better posture or worse posture. You may ask, can't we ignore it? No, it's the law. It's the law of consequences. You can't ignore one side and do something without bringing that back. It's like uh, what Dr. Dara Chira said, it's, it's you know, from a child, from growth, from it affects all these different things. Now, we all know what this is. This, uh, obviously, it's wheelchair. So what's the importance of this wheelchair? Well, if we look at the spine and we think about it, what happens, Javier, what happens if we get a break right here? What are we? Oh my God, nowhere. We're, Darren, well, we're paraplegic, right? We're yeah. paraplegic. Sorry to bring you out of your, your stupor at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> What happens, Javier? What happens? They if just we break my, my. I finally get the beer, and then <laughs> you break the seat. Uh, what happens? Hammond's doing shots of tequila right now. What happens if we if we have a break up here? What, what, what? How does that affect our system? Well, then we're paraplegic, right? Or quadriplegic? I mean, so one was. One was paraplegic, one was quadriplegic. What happens, Javier, if we get a break here? We totally, yeah. totally with problems. It's tough well, actually, community. no, we have no problems. We don't have to exactly. worry about, COVID, that, we don't have to worry about our bills. We don't have to worry about everything. Our family's going to, uh, because that's a hangman's fracture. That's where, yeah. you, you know, above C3 and above, you're dead. So all these things are protected. All these things are very important. And so our body does a lot of things to help us compensate for all of this. Now, as dentists, we're so used to acting alone when we see what's in front of us, right? We go like, yeah, okay, I'm a dentist. I gotta solve all these things. And we saw Mariano talk about um, tri, uh, tripoding and, and, and I love Mariano, all these things, but we can't all be him. And we're trying to do the dentistry and do all the, the efforts of doing the dentistry. But really, and we've talked about some of this, we want interprofessional care, right? But interprofessional care can be a straight line. And it doesn't really help our patient out as much. What we really got to try and do is we got to have collaborative care, where we have feedback back and forth between various different um, professions and so that we can all understand what we're trying to do, and then we can all help each other gain that um, goal for our patient, which is basically um, decreasing structural strain. That's what I do all day, is I just try and decrease structural strain. So, I know, I'm 
I'm a dentist, how do I do this? Well, normally we're competing with other healthcare providers where, you know, one on top of the other and patients tell me, oh, I've seen 20 different people and they all said they could fix it and they can't. What we really need to do is we need to collaborate with other healthcare providers. So it's not a pyramid, but it's a concentric circles of conversation between all of them. And that includes medical doctors, psychiatrists, um, physiotherapists, um, chiropractors, uh, biomechanical therapists, everybody. So, I mean, what do we do? We treat teeth. And we have, this is an example of a Nuka chiropractor. We have a Nuka chiropractor providing some therapy. And, and a Nuka chiropractor is a type of chiropractor that um, uh, Nuka, N-U-C-C-A, stands for the National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. And what she's doing is she's putting a very mild pressure on the cervical vertebrae just to allow the vertebrae to slide back where they should be. Now, before this, there's lots of measurements, there's x-rays. I provide them quite often for CBCT. They have their own x-rays, they have their own measurements, and they figure out what the slippage is. Is it complex? Is it simple? Can it be done? What type of treatment? What vector of treatment? And they're all providing that. So that's a type of upper cervical care called NUCA. And that provides my patients with the ability to get some alignment before or during my treatment of them. Now, it sounds like a add a whole layer of complexity to my practice in in some degrees we're right because some of these people you have to reach out you have to talk to somebody maybe you have to buy once all this covid stuff goes away you have to buy somebody a coffee and sit down talk to them explain to them what it is you're going to do you're going to have to reach out to them find people that want to reach out back to you and then generate this input and why should you do this this is a study i did with jeff Schulten, who's a nuka chiropractor raymond turiner is a professor at the University of Calgary. And we showed by doing T-scan and then by doing um, before and after adjustments, we would get an improved stability or a worsened stability depending on different patients. Some patients would say, my, my bite is out, but it's not their bite. They, I send them back into the Nuka chiropractor and boom, their bite's corrected. Or some would, have a really bad bite, but they would, um, uh, or they'd have a really balanced bite, but they get an, uh, a really bad bite once we corrected their instability. It goes both ways. So we're just looking at this rotation of C1, the slippage of C1, all these different types of things so that we can provide uh, help for our patients. Now remember, if the C1 is rotated, three degrees, you get a 23% or 23%, yeah, decrease in the spinal cord volume. 23% by just rotating three degrees. And this is, this is your measurement pathway going from, uh, from your brain to the rest of your body. What else can happen? Well, we've done standing MRIs and we've shown that the jugular veins sit just in front of the transverse processes for the atlas. And when you rotate the atlas forward, you actually change blood flow and CFF or CSF flow in and out of the brain. Um, the main drainage for the CFS is uh, uh, CSF is the jugular vein, and we can actually get buildups of pressure in the brain. We can get uh, the onset of migraines. We get this brainstorm that happens. Plus. There's a whole bunch of other issues that come with this rotation. So how do I convert this information? We, I start veneer view and then I take a bunch of photos. We all need to take a lot of photos. Biggest hint, don't assume, pretty young girl. Um, she has all these lists of things that are going on. She can't work, she can't socialize, she can't function, headaches, etc. And so what do I do? I start my exam with a series of photos and she looks perfectly normal. But unfortunately, when we take a closer look, she's got a low shoulder, 
her head's rotated, um, her hips are rotated forward, she can't turn her head one way. When she looks up and down, she, her cervical vertebrae are twisted, and even with her hips, her left foot's more forward than her right. So this is what we do when we see her, but we also do special types of, or not special types, we just do a, a, a very thorough exam of the mouth, and we look at all these various different things one of the, on the top in the middle, one I want to point out, the anterior keyway bite. I always have patients bite tip to tip, and we were talking about how people generate some wear in their occlusion. And I think a lot of people want to decompress the TMJ or they want to open up their airway, and they have a habitual movement where they wear down their front teeth by moving tip to tip. And we see all these things that are happening in the patient. I go through the K7, the chiropractor and everything else. And at the end of it, I'm making this acetyl resin orthotic, we call it a natural fit orthotic. Uh, arm ceramic makes it here in Calgary and it comes in and out of the mouth and it works really great. Like I said, I have one in my mouth right now. And it allows me to reposture that jaw and gain some stability for what's gonna come next. Either wearing the orthotic long-term, maybe um, having ortho or maybe having Full mouth reconstruction, all this, this person has beautiful teeth, she doesn't need full mouth reconstruction. And that's a picture she sent me of her wedding and she's wearing her orthotic because after we began to correct her and get her better, she began to ill function, she began to ill work, she went and got married and she'd been postponing it because of all of her pain. So that's a happy story, everybody loves a happy story. <laughs> beautiful, so, beautiful. Fantastic. My own treatment protocol, just about done here. Uh, I try and act like a, a sort of the captain on a hockey team. I'm, I'm directing people around. People are directing me. It's, it's, it's really like a hockey team. This is showing what's called a functional rebalance where I'm using the T-scan and I'm actually adjusting the bite if this is needed. I mean, every case is going to be different. Then I'm going to send them to a nuclear chiropractor. They're going to take special measurements. They're going to do look at this atlas and uh, occiput and 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 the whole body, and then they're going to provide their treatment. And then what I'm going to do is bring, maybe use a biomechanical therapist. And what they're going to do is they're going to look at their ability to stretch and move and how their body is responding, so that they're going to he's going to show them. Uh, this is Jeff Dakin, Dakin Rehab. He's going to show them how to maybe do some stretches, may, might do some therapy. He's gonna show them how to do some stretches so that they can actually maintain some of this ability as we go forward. And so he's taking my patients and showing them how these happen. Then maybe I'm gonna make an orthotic, who knows? I might make an orthotic, I might not have to, but that's all gonna take place. And that's gonna be determined by a whole bunch of examinations and everything that we heard today, like I said, you guys brought the best of the best. So what we have to do, think biomechanical, not just mechanical. Look past the teeth. I mean, we need to diagnose and then we need to inform the patient what we see. And we need to look at all of the body, not just, just because we're dentists, doesn't mean we can't see other problems and then collaborate with other people. So we can solve these postural effects or we can keep ourselves frustrated. Totally up to you guys. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's my email and my website. Um, I'm probably done early or am I done on time? You did oh, you so did. awesome. Actually a few minutes early, yeah. but that was a really good to put the things together. I love the circles mm -hmm. that you mentioned. That exactly. circle of communication on flow instead of the pyramid, honestly, that impacts me because I think in life it's not about to get higher. 